This video is a review of the chapter on the second law of thermodynamics and entropy in the chemical thermodynamics playlist. So we start with spontaneity. So some processes occur spontaneously, which means that they occur uh, without any input of external energy into an isolated system. So if we have some gas molecules A and gas molecules B, and they're separated by some partition, if we remove the partition, they'll mix together thoroughly. This process occurs without any change in internal energy. There's no work or heat involved. So th the first law of thermodynamics doesn't tell us that this should go in a specific direction. But this is an irreversible process. It, it occurs in the forward direction, but it doesn't occur in the reverse. Molecules will not spontaneously segregate themselves, but they'll integrate and mix thoroughly throughout the container. So this is explained by a concept called entropy. When we first define the entropy, the change in entropy as the heat involved in a reversible process divided by the temperature. And the entropy <clears throat> is used as a measure of the disorder of the system. As we can tell here, this system is rather orderly in its initial state and more disorderly, more random in its final state. So this entropy is a measure of disorder and it increases during these spontaneous processes. So this entropy is also a state function. It does not depend on path and the change in entropy during a system is just equal to the integral from the initial to final states of the reversible heat divided by the temperature which occurs along every step of the way. We can calculate the entropy which occurs during the expansion of a gas. We can calculate this isothermally where the temperature doesn't change or adiabatically where there's no heat involved. <clears throat> so the change in entropy for the system is equal to the minus change in entropy for the surroundings during isothermal expansion and that is equal to number of moles times gas constant times natural log of the final volume divided by the initial volume. For an adiabatic process, the expansion entropy for the system and the surroundings is equal to zero. This leads us to the second law of thermodynamics, which says that the change in entropy is greater than or equal to zero for any process which occurs in an isolated system. So the entropy change for the universe is greater than or equal to zero for any given process. It's equal to zero if it's reversible and it is greater than zero if it is irreversible. Entropy actually gives us what is called the arrow of time. And we know that time goes forward in the direction that increases the entropy of the universe. You can also define <clears throat> entropy by the clop iron inequality where entropy is greater than or equal to the heat divided by the temperature for a given process. We notice that this equals here was the case where it is reversible and greater than, as we said, when it is irreversible. You can define entropy in terms of what are called microstates in statistical mechanics. The entropy of a system is equal to the Boltzmann constant times the natural log of the number of microstates available to that system. So this is if all the states have the same given energy. This is what is called the ergodic hypothesis, which is the fundamental assumption of statistical mechanics, which says that if, if uh, any microstate has the same energy, then their probabilities of the system being in that microstate are equal, which gives us the Boltzmann formula for entropy. If the probabilities of states are not the same, then our entropy formula becomes the Gibbs entropy formula, which is equal to minus the Boltzmann constant times the sum over all states, probability of being in that state times natural log of that probability. If all of your probabilities are set to a constant value, then this, uh, then this result for the Gibbs entropy will reduce to this equation above. We can use the concept of entropy to define the maximum efficiency of heat engines, for example, the internal combustion en engine, which may power automobiles. And the maximum efficiency of a heat engine in converting, uh, in converting heat into work is one, which would be perfect, minus the cold temperature reservoir divided by the hot temperature reservoir. 
So an, a heat engine can only achieve perfect efficiency when the temperature of the cold reservoir is equal to zero Kelvin, which cannot be achieved in practice.